The word essential comes from the Latin essentia, meaning absolutely necessary or extremely important. The essential company, whose stated goal is to make technology easier and more accessible, might someday qualify as extremely important, but its first product, the essential phone, fits better into the extended definition. The brass tacks, the bare fundamentals of a smartphone. The result is a product at once refreshingly simple and frustratingly limited. I'm Michael Fisher, and this is the Essential Phone Review, brought to you by dbrand. If you're the type who likes to stand out from the crowd without being too ostentatious about it, this hardware was made for you. It might look like just another glass slab, but pick it up and you'll find the backplate is actually made from ceramic, with a luster and scratch resistance you can't get from glass. To me, holding the Essential Phone feels a lot like handling a domino from an expensive set. Some people won't like the added bulk of its 185 grams, but I love it. The side buttons are deliciously clicky. And rather than the traditional soft aluminum, those buttons are mounted on a titanium midplate. This should make the phone more likely to survive a fall than most. A big part of the Essential Phone's standout look is its screen which is big even though the phone's chassis is small. That's thanks to some super slim bezels and also this bizarre looking widow's peak, which is a window for the selfie camera. This is something I expected to be annoyed by every time I looked at the phone, but I actually came to like the quirky personality it lends to the design. I like it so much, in fact, that when I use an app that doesn't automatically scale to fill the whole canvas, I get annoyed at the notch's absence. Speaking of apps, after years of calling for stock Android on beautiful hardware, we finally got it. My review device had just 16 apps preloaded, and as you might expect, it's insanely quick and responsive. It's hard to put into words just how refreshing that is. But you know the old saying, Be careful what you wish for. You may get it. See, stock Android is great. But the upgrades that other manufacturers add on, well, they can be great too. Some offer shortcuts to drop the notification shade, night modes to filter blue light after dark, gestures to quickly trigger system functions. You won't find any of that on the Essential phone. I hasten to add, though, that this isn't a mark against the phone, because you can just install another launcher. You can do anything you want. You're starting from a base coat of stock Android. In fact, Essential only built one app for this thing, the camera viewfinder. I've seen a lot of tiptoeing and equivocating in other reviews when it comes to this camera, so let me be clear about my impression. It is not good, at least in its current form. HDR mode does so little to enhance the dynamic range of a shot that it seems almost broken, but turning it on also enables the flash for some reason. Despite having both phase detect and IR focusing, my device regularly fails to lock onto a subject. There's no optical stabilization and poor electronic stabilization, which means videos are jumpy in even ideal circumstances. And low light photos are, <sighs> I'm well, just look. Given enough light, the phone is certainly capable of pleasant pictures, and it's fun to enable the monochrome mode so you can use the secondary camera for some artsy black and whites. But put the Essentials camera up against a really capable one like the Pixels, which, if you ask me, is the closest thing to a sibling this phone has, and the results speak for themselves. Now, some of you are already down in the comments accusing me of beating up on this $4 billion company, so just hang on a sec. This camera app, which is currently so buggy it's barely usable, is going to get fixes. The phone has already received one update in the time that I've had it, and I have no doubt that another one will fix the stability and focus problems. I've also read that the company plans to add a portrait mode. I'm sure it can even improve the image quality somewhat. I mean, Motorola did that with the first Moto X, making what was then a terrible camera at least serviceable. But crucially, it didn't make that camera great. In fact, I've never heard of a software update transforming a mediocre camera into a terrific one. And 
when you're charging this much money for your smartphone, the camera just isn't something you can skimp on. Factor in the lack of waterproofing and the absence of a headphone jack, and who's gonna buy this thing for $699? In part, it's people who can overlook those shortcomings and appreciate the details. So let's take 60 seconds for the small stuff. The phone ships with a very fast 27-watt charger and a beautiful fabric-insulated USB cable with a nice strap for coiling. It's also got a fabric-covered dongle in the box for your headphones, and if you'd rather bother people around you than bother with those, the single speaker is quite loud. I'm just trying to keep to the essentials, Major. Despite how high up on the edge the earpiece is, phone calls are quite clear, and I love that there's a notification LED squirreled away in there too. At a max of 500 nit, the display doesn't get quite bright enough to be easily read on very sunny days. I haven't gotten to try out the Stick-On 360 camera yet, which is so far the only mod in a promised portfolio of accessories, but I like the minimal connectors compared to Motorola's solution. Oh, and PSA, when you're putting your SIM in this thing, don't stick your SIM tool in the microphone hole like I did. Why Essential put these so close together, I'll never know. Finally, let's talk battery life. 3,040 milliamp hours is just a medium size these days, but during my four-day test period, the phone never died before bedtime. Maybe the slim software load has something to do with that, and hopefully that same sveltness will allow Essential to deliver on its goal of timely software updates. As with the true battery endurance, only time will tell. Essential set out to make a better smartphone, and in some ways it has. But it seems to me that that phone was pushed out the door before it was fully baked. And my early encounters with customer service, trying to get my retail unit delivered, have evoked more memories of successful Kickstarter campaigns trying to keep up than world-class outfits running a smooth ship. Currently, there are no agents available. Please press 1 to leave a voicemail. Now look, I respect Essential's ambition and its engineering accomplishments, and any company founded by the father of Android is to be taken seriously. But that company's first product, the Essential phone, feels to me more like a startup's better-than-expected freshman offering than it does the first salvo in a coming techno revolution. As you may have seen, it also gets fingerprinty AF, so dbrand sent me a bunch of vinyl skins to stamp out the smudges, and change up the look. I tried out mahogany, marble, black carbon fiber, and dragon, but my personal favorite is the matte black, which preserves Essential's minimalist intention. Get your dbrand skin at the link in the description below, and remember, subscribers are essential to making more videos just like this. Hit that subscribe button when you visit The Mr. Mobile on YouTube, and follow me on Facebook, where I'll share shots from that 360 camera just as soon as it comes in. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.